we're going to work on pulling that up with those glutes. Hi everyone, I'm Danielle Wyrick. I'm the owner of Iron Fitness Personal Training and we're here today at Iron Fitness with two of our certified fitness trainers, Shelly Miller and Hannah Aldifer. And we're gonna take you through a workout that we developed primarily for those who've had a new baby and wanna get their function, control, and look of their core back. But it's not just for new moms, whether it has been six weeks or six years since you've given birth, you can always benefit from these quick exercises. While you are performing these exercises, you wanna remember two things. First, pain is your barometer. These exercises may be challenging, you may be sore, but you should not have pain. If you do, you may want to contact your doctor to see why that may be happening. Second, you are only as strong as your weakest link. So you were not trying to perform these exercises as fast as possible, you were trying to perfect them. So all movements are good quality movements. As we go through the exercises, we will be explaining what muscles we will be using and what they do. Because if you don't understand what is going on in your body during these exercises, you can't get the full benefit. One last thing before we get started. We have to teach you how to do a transverse abdominus contraction. What you want to do is stick one finger in your belly button. And then you want to put your other hand back right across from it. And you literally just want to pull it in and I want you to then to hold it in. You may be thinking these exercises are too easy. But when done with all of your effort, they can be as hard as you need them to be. You may be on the other end of the spectrum and be thinking these exercises are too hard, but they won't be if you hang in there with us and progress as we suggest. Or you might be thinking, I don't have time, I'll do them later, just stop. Those are excuse words and I want you to eliminate them with I can't and plan for a goal that you can achieve. We've made these exercises short, to the point and progressive, so plan for when you wake up in the morning or before you go to bed. You can even do them with everybody around. You just need to do them. I've worked with many athletes throughout my career and that's where the majority of these exercises have come from. So we want to prepare you for the most physical game of your life and that's being a mom. So let's get ready to do this routine and prepare yourself for the sport of parenthood. Shelly's gonna help us with our warm up here today. Let's first start with a simple finger press. Just push those fingertips together, really trying to get some blood flow to the area. And don't forget that nice TVA contraction during all of this as well. Now let's move to a palm press. Press those palms together, trying to get all the way up through the fingertips if you can. Your wrists can be in some odd positions whenever you're caring for your baby from feeding, picking up your child, and you don't want your wrists to be the limiting factor in how you care for your baby. Let's move on to a hand pull. With this one, you're really trying to pull your hands apart. And we want to think of using your back to do that. Your wrists can also take a hit when it's coupled with things like using a computer as well as everything that you're doing for your baby. So you want to be able to strengthen them as much as you can. Let's move on down to some high knees. Just lift those knees in front, trying to loosen up the hips and knees again. Good. Give me a few more here. Now we're going to turn to the side for some butt kickers. Good. This one here is actually going to warm up your hip flexors. Your hip flexors can be really tight whenever you've had a new baby from that excess weight of your pregnancy. Good. Now we're going to come back. We're going to loosen up those knees with some knee circles. Just trying to bring that uh, blood flow to the area and get that synovial fluid moving. All the bending, kneeling, and stooping you do with kids is very intense. And you want to be sure that your joints can handle it. Now we're going to go right into your upper core and rotator cuff work. Take your band and let's attach it to a pole or a door. Now don't get too caught up in how many reps you're doing right now. Just kind of hang in there with us and follow along. You can move forward and backward to adjust the tension in your band. You can also move slower and faster during these exercises to increase your intensity. If you're doing these on your own, you want to think of doing about 15 reps each exercise. So we're going to start with some internal and external shoulder rotation. Start with external rotation with the arm farthest away from your pole. Good. You want to keep some space in between your body and your arm. You want your elbow at 90 degrees. Give me about five more here. Four, three, good. Two, and one. Now we're going to stay right here, but we're going to do some internal rotation. So bring that arm across your body. Again, keeping that space. Good TVA contraction. And give me five, four, three, two, and one. Now we're going to turn around. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Start with that external rotation. Good. 
Now your rotator cuff is made up of four muscles, your supraspinatus, your infraspinatus, your teres minor, and your subscapularis. Good, now let's switch sides. Internally rotate for me, good. Now your rotator cuff causes rotation at your shoulder. Things like turning a doorknob or reaching behind you or throwing a ball. Give me about three more here, three, two, and one. Now we're gonna turn to the center and we're gonna do a movement where you row and rotate. Good, this movement we call a scarecrow. It's a great movement for your rotator cuff and your upper back. Good, now if you can do this movement well, we're gonna go into a Y, which is a little bit more advanced, that Shelly is doing. Now if you can't quite do that, stick back here with Hannah. You wanna be able to perfect this movement first. Good, give me two more. Now we're gonna flip the bands over, we're gonna go into some bicep curls. Good. Your biceps tend to get a little bit overused whenever you have a new child or a new baby because of all the holding and carrying that we do. So we're not gonna do a ton right now. Now we're gonna flip our hands over, we're gonna bring those elbows back and we're gonna do a tricep kickback. You want your elbows a little bit above your back, you get a nice full extension at your elbow and a good contraction for your triceps. You want those biceps and triceps to remain balanced. So we're gonna do a few more here and that's gonna help you prevent some elbow injuries in the future. Go, give me three more. Two and one. Good, now we're gonna come on up. We're gonna take our band off of the pole. And we're gonna come on out for a, an iron cross. An iron cross is another great exercise for that upper back. You're gonna hold your band out about shoulder height and you're just gonna pull it out. You want those elbows nice and straight. You don't want them locked though. Good, this movement works that posterior delt, the back of your shoulder, works that upper trapezius or your upper back, and it works your rhomboids, think right in between those shoulder blades. Good, give me about three more. Two and one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our band and hold it in each hand. You're gonna step on the center of your band and we're gonna do some lateral walks. Lateral walks are for your hip abductors or your outer thigh. You want your feet parallel during this movement and you're gonna walk to one side. Good. And we're gonna bring it on back. We're gonna do this again then in just a second because whenever you've just had a new baby, this can be a pretty intense exercise, so we're gonna break it down a little bit. Good, feet parallel, don't toe out, TVA contraction. Great, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our bands down on the ground, we're gonna go into a squat. Squats are a great lower body exercise, and what you wanna think of to get your form correctly is almost like you're trying to hover over a public toilet seat that you don't wanna sit on. And as you can see by Hannah here, whenever you squat, your knees remain over your toes in a nice alignment, and you wanna be back on your heels so those toes can wiggle. Good, keep those TVA, that TVA contracted, your chest high and your head forward for me. Now if you can advance the movement, you wanna do what Shelly's doing here and add in a little scarecrow position. And this is gonna make it a little bit more challenging. How about giving me about four more? Four, three, two, good, last one. Good, now what we're gonna do is take it to the floor for some planks. Planks are a great exercise when done correctly to help strengthen up that entire core and to create some balance. Now as you can see by Shelly and Hannah, their shoulders are directly over their wrists and they're up on their toes. Now they, you might only hold this for a few seconds. That's okay, just drop down when you need to and take a little pause. You can always go longer and longer every time. Now I'm gonna show you how we check alignment. You wanna take a broomstick or a handle of some kind and you wanna place it on their back. You want your tailbone, your shoulders, and your head, drop your head down just a little bit, there we go, to remain in contact with the stick. Okay, and then you know that you're gonna have a nice, good alignment. Good, now if you want to advance this movement a little bit, you can do what Shelly is gonna be doing, and that is a bridge to a plank, where she's going down under her elbows and back up under her hands. Good. And if, again, stay with Hannah if you aren't quite ready for this yet. Now we're gonna have everybody back up into that plank and we're gonna move on to some knee drops where you're just dropping one knee and the next. On this one, you wanna really make sure you keep those hips stable. This is the hard part here. Good, keep this going. And give me about two more. And two, and. Now we're gonna drop those knees completely and we're gonna to go to an alternating arm and leg lift. We sometimes call it a bird dog. And we're gonna move and extend one arm and the opposite leg at the same time. Good. And you wanna think of moving out more than up. You wanna work from your shoulder and your hip, not your low back. Good, keep that movement going. Give me two more each side. And last one. Good, 
Now we're gonna drop down, we're gonna go onto our backs for some hip bridges. You're gonna lay on your back and you're gonna bend your knees and press your heels into the ground, just hands down at your sides. You're gonna lift your glutes, your gluteus maximus is my kid's favorite muscle, which is your butt muscle. We're gonna work on pulling that up with those glutes. Good. Now your gluteus maximus is a muscle that often gets weak from pregnancy and overstretched from sitting. So it's a difficult muscle um, from the point of activation. So we wanna use this to start to get that baseline strength back. Good. Now if you wanna advance it, you can do what Shelly's doing, a single leg hip bridge. Good. Give me two more here. And now Shelly switch me legs. And if you can't quite do that single leg yet, I want you to stick with Hannah and keep doing this, the double leg hip bridge. Two more. Good job. Now we're gonna come on down, we're gonna move on to one side. We're gonna do a side bridge. Now with a side bridge, you want your elbow under your shoulder and you wanna stagger your feet. So you want your top leg in front of your bottom leg and you're gonna lift your hips up. Good, now you want a nice straight alignment, good. Good through here. Good. And you're gonna hold that. You're gonna use those obliques to keep those hips up. Great job. Now, if you wanna advance this movement, you can do like Shelly and you can stack your feet one on top of the other. It is more advanced. Good. So only do it if you know that you can hold that staggered stance. Now let's drop down. We're gonna switch sides. Stacked or staggered, lift the hips. Watch that head, keep a nice good alignment. Focus in on those obliques. You want those sides of your core to really be activated here. Good. Now let's drop it on down. While we're down here, we're gonna go and start our cool down with some stretches. Let's go with the legs straight out for some hamstring stretching first. Reach for your shins or your toes, with your toes up and your knees up. You should feel a nice good stretch through that hamstring low back area. Good. Now we're gonna go into a stretch that's a little bit more complicated, but it's an excellent stretch to be doing. It's called a book stretch. You're gonna lay on your back. You're gonna bend your knees and you're gonna drop them to one side. Now you wanna keep your opposite shoulder down on the mat. Now if you can't fully get into this stretch with your knees down and your shoulders down, I want you to stay here with Hannah. You wanna keep that nice big stretch. But if you can do that well, I want you to go into the full stretch and bring your palm like Shelly's doing over into the other hand, like you're rolling over in bed almost. Good, give me one more here. Now we're gonna bring everybody's knees up, switch me sides, and go to that other side. Book stretch full if you can, but if you can't quite do it, just work on that stretch with Hannah. This is an excellent stretch to kind of open up that chest and work that thoracic area or that area around your rib cage to help those shoulders and hips move independently from each other. Good, now we're gonna come up into a kneeling position. For a kneeling hip flexor stretch. Good, now you're gonna go up onto one leg. You want to kind of lunge forward just slightly. Then you're going to tilt your hips back so you get a nice good hip flexor stretch through that leg that is down. Good. Now, switch me legs, lunge it forward slightly, tilt those hips, get a nice stretch, hold that. Great, now we're all gonna stand up and we're gonna continue our stretches with the chest stretch. Put those hands behind the back and I want you to think of opening up that chest, getting a nice good stretch. Now we're gonna take those arms, we're gonna pull them up overhead and reach forward for a good mid-back stretch through that latissimus dorsi in through here. Good, we're gonna drop it down. We're gonna do a posterior delt stretch by bringing that arm across. Now in this one, what you wanna remember is to keep that shoulder down. If it starts to raise up, you're not gonna get a nice good stretch through here. You wanna keep it down. Let's switch arms. Good, drop that down, good. Now we're gonna do a double stretch for your shoulders. You're gonna bring one arm over and the other arm back. Try to really reach and try to get those fingers to come in contact, good. Now we're gonna switch arms. Now you might find that one hand or one direction, you can really get a lot farther than the other. Don't worry about it, just keep working on getting those hands closer together. Okay, now we're gonna bring those on down. We're gonna finish up with a double stretch for your wrist. You wanna put the palms of your hands on your hips first and you wanna roll your shoulders forward. Good. Then we're gonna flip it and you're gonna put the back of your hands on your hips. And you're gonna pull your chest back. That's great. Good, now that's what we have for you today. I hope you've really worked hard and 
I'd like to see you doing this about three to four times a week. And I'd also like to thank Shelly and Hannah for helping me out today. If you'd like to see a list of the exercises, you can visit our website at www.ironfitnesspt.com. Thank you. Thank you.